when the season started, I'm looking at the odds on favorites to win the title. This is preseason. Boston Celtics and the Denver Nuggets were tied at uh, plus 450. Then it was the Phoenix Suns, oops, then the Bucks, Golden State, Lakers, Heat, 76ers, Clippers, Grizzlies, Mavericks. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Mavericks were tied with the Cleveland Cavaliers just ahead of the Sacramento Kings. Brought to you by Panini America, the official trading cards of the Dan Patrick Show. So you had the Mavs at plus 2,500, same for the Cavs, then the Kings, then the Pelicans, then the Knicks, and then the Minnesota Timberwolves uh, were at uh, plus 6,600. It was a good year. You can lose and still have a good year. I think this was a good year for Minnesota. I think it was a good year for the New York Knicks. Certain teams that maybe they overachieve a, a little bit. Uh, When the Hawks went to the Eastern Conference Finals a couple of years ago. Gosh, does it seem like it was only a couple of years ago? I don't think it really happened. I Yes. You know what? When you told me that the other day, you're like, God, I can't believe the Hawks went to the Eastern Conference Finals. I go, what year? (laughs) You go, it was just a couple of years ago. I go, oh, my God, that's right. The Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals. Remember Ben Simmons passed up that wide open shot? Oh, yes. 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 All right, so you got Dallas uh, going to the NBA Finals. Got a lot of storylines here. You got Kyrie going back to Boston. Kristaps Porzingis maybe, uh, you know, going back to Dallas. I don't know if the Maverick fans are going to be upset that, uh, you know, Porzingis comes to town. Boston fans are going to be, they're going to let Kyrie know all about that. They're going to be Boston fans. Yes, they are. That's 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 what they are. So Luka and Kyrie each had 36. This was never a game. I'm watching, and all of a sudden, Luca gets going and gets going. And it kind of sounded like this. 14 for Luca on the road. Oh, what oh, is going oh, on oh, here? Oh, he, is, he is on one tonight. Poked away Anderson, controlled by the Mavs. Here comes another heat check from, from Luca. Watch it again, another three. Got it, he's a flamethrower. He is on fire, 20 points. All right, Kevin Harlan and Reg with the call there. Here's Anthony Edwards after the loss talking about Luka. What did you see happen so early there that just brought a knockout punch and made it tough to come back? Uh, Luka, just that simple. Uh, he had like three shots from the from the logo. So pretty much nothing we can do about it. Well... I thought there was something you could do about it. And I know the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to get a hall pass today because we're going to go, well, they overachieved. And there was no aggression. I wanted to see physicality. I wanted you to come out and say, you're not going to win on our floor. And I never saw it last night. And Luca all of a sudden got on a heater and he was not getting off until he said, yeah, I'm a little tired. Hey, Kai, why don't you take over? And then Kyrie Irving had 36 as well. But I was surprised. I don't want to say disappointed. I was surprised that I didn't get physicality out of Minnesota, that they were going to. I mean, at some point, you got to bump him, knock him down something. You can't just let him go, I don't know, where do I want to score? Uh, You know, I haven't shot over here in a couple of, I'm going to go over here and hit a three. I wanted to see something more. I wanted to see Anthony Edwards. See, this is what drives me crazy about my business. We have to have a declaration. It's got to be, like today, is Luka the best player in the NBA? I don't know. Was he the best player a week ago? Uh, Probably not, but he is now. Okay. But then it wasn't long ago where we were saying, Joker, he's going to be a top 10 player. Okay. Like, it's immediate. Anthony Edwards, he's the second coming of Michael Jordan. No, he's not. Give it time. He's 22. Luca, if Luca wins the title this year, Luca will win the MVP next year. You can pretty much count on it. Because now all of a sudden, he lived up to the expectations. He won a title, like Joker. I don't know. He doesn't deserve the MVP until he won a title. Then he wins a title, and I go, he's going to win the MVP next year, or now this year. And he did. Because we need that validation. 
Now we're going to be disappointed in Anthony Edwards. He didn't know Michael Jordan. Well, he didn't say he was. We did. And Luke is not old. He's 25. It does feel like he's old. And at three years is a big difference in the NBA. Anthony Edwards is going to be a star. He already is a star. But he's not ready. He wasn't ready. His team wasn't ready. It was a great story this year. And then go back to when, you know, the Dallas Mavericks got Kyrie Irving. Seton went back and looked at the show that we did that day because it was in real time our reaction when Shams reported that Brooklyn was sending him to the Dallas Mavericks. And they got a couple of players and they got some draft picks there. But the reaction was pretty much the same. Oh, man, Nets, they did a great job. They fleeced the Mavs. Look at what they got. They got Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, a first-round pick and multiple second-round picks, and uh, Dallas got Kyrie. And everybody had the same reaction, pretty much. And I think our poll question was, uh, they get better or... Did the, did the Mavs get better or problems? Yes. Yeah. And my reaction was both, because you can't look at Kyrie and, without looking at you know, him in full. Like the totality of you get Kyrie, what are you getting? Well, you're getting an injury-prone guy who's 31, and we don't know if basketball is important to him anymore. That was a fair assessment about Kyrie. I never said anything about his basketball skills because even at 31, even banged up, injury-prone, he still was elite. But I said, you know, you're not sure what you're getting. But it really came down to almost his mindset. Like, did he want to hit the reset button? Uh, we ask, how would Luca respond to this? Would it be a welcoming sight that he would get somebody who was a equal as far as scoring, playmaking ability? And, uh, and it turned out that way. And Kyrie has been great. You know, I, and this isn't revisionist history. I, I know what he is. I know, I didn't know who he was, but he came to Dallas and there's no drama there. We haven't heard anything out of him. And that's good because we do want to see him just play basketball. The other stuff, the ancillary stuff, the off the court, if he revisits that when he's done, great. I like to see a player who has that much talent, that ability to be back on the big stage again. And he's been through an awful lot. But at 31, 32, all of a sudden you look around and you go, this is not going to last much longer. How do I want to be remembered? Does he care about how he wants to be remembered? But when he plays, when he wants to play, he's remarkable. Here's Kyrie Irving after the win. It has been seven long years, but it's, it's also felt like um, the right amount of time, you know, in, in order to reward myself, be in the locker room with my teammates and enjoying it a uh, long time coming so we are going to enjoy this but we obviously know this is just a pit stop in the journey and we got to get ready for uh, you know that court turning gold as I, as I like to say you know the shoes turn gold the uh, jerseys turn gold and you know as a kid that's what you dream of uh, getting to is uh, the finals and being able to play against the best of the best with the whole world watching yeah okay get ready for Boston uh, here's some of the uh, reactions. Why any team at all would tether any part of their competitive livelihood, however short or long term, to this dude is beyond me. Was Dallas desperate? Maybe. But Mark Cuban, not afraid to take a chance. They brought in Kyrie. Kyrie had to respect Luka, had to respect Jason Kidd, had to be willing to be a great team player. And he realized that you're not going to be the guy. You know, he had to go out there and also, you know, be a little bit submissive to Luke. It's Luca's team. How do I fit in? And Kyrie has done a wonderful job. Yes, uh, Seton. You know, I think, too, that if you go back, you know, obviously revisionist history, but just some of the things that Kyrie was saying about, you know, appreciating LeBron more. He wished that he had done that more yeah. in Cleveland. And there was a certain – his comments were a lot more mature uh, and that he was reflective, too – it gives you a little bit of insight, actually, into why he's okay being the Robin to Luca's Batman now. He's okay, but no, you go be the guy, and I'll be the other guy that helps us get there. No problem. And he wasn't that way, and that was part of the reason why he wanted out of Cleveland. He wanted his own team. He went to Boston. Then all of a sudden, he wanted out of Boston. Now he goes to Brooklyn. Then he wants to pair up with Harden, Durant. Then that doesn't work out for a variety of reasons. 
you know, his stance with COVID. Uh, there was a you know controversial film that he was backing that was labeled anti-Semitic. I mean, there was a lot of things here, and we didn't know if he wanted to play. When he did play, there was no argument. He was a wonderful player. He's a wonderful player. It was all the other stuff that went into it. So you're going to have people today, they're going to be like, yeah, I knew Dallas was getting a great player, and Dallas got the better end of the deal. That wasn't the way it went down when it first happened. Because everybody reacted as you would expect them to. And that is, we're not quite sure what you're getting. Is Dallas desperate? Did they give up too much? Wow, Brooklyn fleeced uh, the Dallas Mavericks. But last night, uh, Luka was wonderful early. Now you're going to hear today, is Luka the best player in the world? Is it just because you dusted off the Minnesota Timberwolves? Is he now better than Joker because Joker's not in the playoffs? But that's what happens. It's immediate. It's overnight. Luca, best player in the game. A lot of people don't watch basketball games. They see highlights. That was a game, if you watch the game, then you understood somebody is going to basically take his hand and put it on your throat and make sure that you run out of oxygen. He did that to the entire building last night. In real time, you saw it. He outscored Minnesota in the first quarter, 20 to 19. And probably could have put up 60. But then he didn't need to. But watching that in real time, that's when you understand sometimes you got killers out there and they want the ball. They want the moment. And he certainly did last night. And Minnesota had no answers. And they weren't physical. I was shocked with the lack of energy, urgency that I saw with Minnesota. 